dear friends ladies and gentlemen the next topic in our series of video lecture in basic laparoscopy is ergonomics and its importance in laparoscopic surgery next slide there are seven disadvantages of laparoscopy when compared to the open surgery in laparoscopy we are dealing with 2d image when we do the procedure there is no depth perception or tactile feedback unlike in open surgery and the movements are counter intuitive that is when the hand instruments are going through the ports in order to do a downward retraction we need to swing the hand instruments upwards say for example in the camera if you want to see the right side you need to bring the camera to the left if you want to see up we should bring our hand down so it is a counter inducive movement but somehow we slowly start learning the skill and also the movements are very limited because the laparoscopic hand instruments are nothing but extension of the conventional instruments the working hand can only move in two directions so right and left and up and up and down unlike the robotic wrist like movements and also the magnification makes all the our hand tremors very obvious so with all this it is very difficult in the beginning of our career to do the laparoscopy so la laparoscopic procedure is a learning learned skill and is only by practice practice and practice one can master this technique next slide the laparoscopic surgeon is different from open surgeon an open surgeon usually performs any surgery very fast because of the good depth perception and also tactile feedback so he can put the hand and uh, blindly mobilize the appendix or even the hartmann's region or take the right and left vagus in a matter of few minutes the dissection proceeds and even if there is any a bleeding he can just put the pack and wait for some time the ergonomics is a word which is never heard of in the era of open surgery whereas for a laparoscopic surgeon it is different he need to be very slow and meticulous vision is all about laparoscopy we should stop when we don't see anything and even a small amount of bleeding could hinder our progress in laparoscopy it is like a dirt or water in the windscreen unless we wipe them clean we cannot drive safely and also equally important is the ergonomics if we can keep our environment and equipments ergonomically friendly then it makes all the difference a seemingly a simple procedure can be made difficult if we are not adhering to ergonomics in laparoscopy next slide so to be an efficient surgeon we should concentrate on the equipments and environment in which we operate next slide coming to the six important ergonomic principles let us enumerate them first straight line principle triangulation manipulation angle elevation angle low lying table gauge down view let us go one by one next slide straight line principle say for example in a case of uh, appendicitis we stand on the patient's left we look at the right leg fossa and the monitor is just in front of us at the level of the patient's right hip so the surgeon the pathology that is appendix and the monitor they form a straight line a straight optical axis next slide so in that situation if you are going to perform like in this picture the surgeon is practicing with a lab trainer if his optical axis and also his motor axis is right and left working hands they are all in line that is what we call coaxial then the surgery or the procedure becomes very very easy to master 
next slide so coaxial alignment wherein the optical and motor axis are in line is always better rather than lateral alignment as you can see in this picture next slide the next important two principles are what we call baseball diamond concept and a triangulation the optical trocar forms a triangle along with the right and left working trocar and when they meet at the site of the pathology where the dissection is uh, about to happen they make an angle manipulation angle so this setting of the optics the pathology the right and left ports they form what we call a baseball a diamond and we adhere to these two important basic principles doing laparoscopy it's very easy to proceed further next slide let us go further about the manipulation angle imagine you have a dinner plate with the knife and fork the angle between them is of course the manipulation angle and if you take the knife and fork in your hand and it is same way like having a two hand instruments right and left hand instruments so your manipulation of the food or manipulation of the tissue both are good especially if the angle is between 60 to 90 degrees what is azimuth angle the optical axis forms an angle with each instrument and it is usually around 30 to 45 degrees and if there is 30 degree azimuth angle on the right side and 30 degree on the left side and the total of course becomes 60 degree and if we have equal azimuth angle like 30 30 is always better rather than having azimuth angle of 45 in one side and 30 is on the other side if it is possible we should avoid such things happening it may hinder the laparoscopic surgery next slide next important principle is of course elevation angle when we insert the trocar if we are too close to the pathology it will be going more vertically and making things difficult and if we are very well away from the area of interest it will be too acute angle so the ideal elevation angle is around 60 degrees and the trocar should enter about 10 to 12 cm away from the area of interest in order to achieve that next slide so ideal three angles namely a manipulation angle of 60 degrees azimuth angle of equal 30 degree each elevation angle of 60 degree are three essential ergonomic principles one has to adhere to next slide but in sills procedure we know we are not strictly adhere to the ergonomic principles having said that with the proper experience using advanced instruments and energy sources and also using some coaxial instruments and flexible or endo eye laparoscopes spider system one may get around the difficult situation and able to perform any procedure with a single incision next slide as you can see in this video the endo eye can be turned into various directions by moving this knob so we are able to have a panoramic 360 degree view inside the peritoneal cavity like that we can avoid sw swording of the equipments and hands coming close to each other when we have a coaxial instruments next slide and ergonomics with sills we could also consider the spider system wherein the instruments are passed through these the flexible channels and we can achieve intra abdominal triangulation and proceed with laparoscopic surgery as we are doing with the conventional instruments next slide
When it comes to the ergonomics of the hand instruments, we should understand three important aspects. That is, the range of movements at the tip are limited in the conventional instruments compared to the robotic instruments. The conventional instruments only have four different movements, up and down, right and left, whereas the robotic instruments are like wrist, they can have seven different movements. Next slide, Da Vinci Robo. As you can see, the Da Vinci Re Robo hand instruments are unique in that they have a wrist-like action, so we can precisely do division, dissection, and suturing. Next slide. The next important thing in as far as the hand instrument is concerned is the length of the shaft. Most of the average hand instruments are 30 centimeter long, but in pediatrics we could have a shorter version and for bariatric surgery one may opt for 45 centimeter hand instruments. We should know the importance of having the right length instrument for the right situation. Next slide. Because we should understand an important principle called pulcrum effect of the hand instruments. When the instrument is passed, a 30 centimeter instrument passed through about 15 centimeter so car, then we have another few centimeter outside and 10 to 12 centimeter outside. So, if we have one is to one principle, then if we move one the handle one centimeter, the tip also should move one centimeter. If 50 percent of the instrument is inside and 50 percent of the instrument is outside. If the large part of the instrument is outside, say for example, if you used a long instrument in a pediatric patient, most of the hand instrument shaft is outside the patient, so the movements we need to be making large movements outside in order to get a small movement inside. So to be efficient, we should have to achieve always one is to one, equal length of the instruments inside and outside, what we call a pulcrum effect. Next slide. And also when we put the ports, we should know the port should be ideally around 10 to 15 centimeter away from the target organ. That should be in circular fashion where the optic should be and at least 4 to 5 finger breadth the next operating or retracting ports. And they should all like the boundary line and a cricket that should be all in the periphery of a circle. Next slide. And the handle design of uh, hand instruments and needle holders are also of paramount importance. Can be pistol grip, thumb grip, inline grip, or they can be nicely designed with the ergonomic principles so that we could use them efficiently, especially in a long procedure where we need to do a lot of suturing. Next slide. And unlike open surgery in laparoscopic surgery, we should aim for a table quite low down and also the monitor is properly placed such a way that we have at least 10 degree gaze down view and there should be around 60 centimeter distance between the monitor and eye. And when we have the table low down, we could have our hands by the side, elbows slightly extended in a prone position. We should comfortably do the procedure because there is no strain to our neck or shoulder muscles. Whereas if the table is high or if the monitor is little higher, then we need to be looking up and we'll be operating with our head, the arms in a flexed position, so very tiring position. So we should have a ideal relaxed stature when we perform prolonged laparoscopic procedure. Next slide. So the ideal relaxed position, as you can see in this picture, 
the surgeon should have straight head in the axis of the trunk with no rotation or extension of the cervical spine. The shoulders should be in a relaxed and neutral position. The arms should be adducted alongside the body. The elbows bent to 70 to 90 degrees. The form, forearms are in the horizontal or slightly descending axis. The hands are pronated, which are physiologic resting position. The hands and fingers lightly grip the handle or a handpiece. So waistline table, gaze down view, straight line principle, triangulation, they are all very, very important when we do laparoscopic surgery. Next slide. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.